Modern Mysteries, a presentation of BenPadia.com. Segment 1, Moray Patterns. Moray patterns are very common. They appear everywhere, and we see them every day. So obvious are they that we often tend to tune them out and not even notice them on our periphery. But they are as common now as screens on windows and as wire mesh fences. They occur, as seen here in this picture of a common trash bin, when two repeating patterns overlap and cause the appearance of an optical illusion of sorts, the formation of a third pattern created from them both. This is called interference when two original overlapping patterns are the same, and interference when the two that overlap are different patterns. When two similar circles, formed of concentric rings, begin equidistant from one another's origin points, and then this distance is gradually reduced to zero until the centroids finally overlap, it creates an interference pattern optical illusion. Nikola Tesla used such concepts as moray patterns to help him visualize scalar wave field interactions, where two wave fronts emanated from separate scalar sources begin to intersect and overlap, creating interface between the waves. Moray patterns are, basically, very simple black and white patterns, usually of circular or square design. The purpose of these simple patterns is to print them onto transparency paper and move one relative to the other to create the more complex forms of moray patterns, the overlapping of the twin scalar wave patterns to form a third pattern created as a combination of the other two. This form of moray pattern is limitless in its chaotic symmetry, singular in its beauty, and psychedelic as an optical illusion. Because of the human tendency to tune out repetitive sensory stimuli, much as a digital television only refreshes the pixels that change between one frame and the next, we simply avoid looking directly at such patterns when and where they occur in our daily lives. But nevertheless, they are there, bordering on our consciousness, all the time anyway. Segment 2. Cymatics Cymatics is defined presently as a solely acoustic application of the same essential concept as moray patterns. Discovered accidentally by Galileo, chymatics is the practice of generating geometrical patterns using sand to reflect the vibrations of sound waves through it. This can be done in any number of ways, from simply drawing a violin bow across a flat metal sheet covered in sand, to applying electromagnetic pitches beyond the human ear to ferromagnetic fluids like cornstarch mixed with water. Consider the Lysigis curve form seen here, signifying harmonic frequency ratios of sound waves measured on an oscilloscope. These portray the same waveforms from the side as we are about to see from the top down and assume regular standing wave patterns at the same pitches and harmonic frequencies in all acoustic tunings. While the patterns of sand on metal plates that are then attuned to vibrate in tune with a specific frequency of sound, the so-called chymatics are both beauteous and numerous. They are not so beyond compare. The regular or standing wave state patterns symbolizing pitches familiar to us as harmonics and notes were all classified by Ernst Kladny. He categorized the eight tones we know of as an octave into 64 possible pitches of frequency at which regular standing wave state patterns formed. Recall, however, that these are, for sounds, only a slice of their wavelength, and that when, as in harmonics, chords, and scales, we combine multiple tones into scalar wave cascades, 
of audible sounds so that these various patterns would overlap like the Moray pattern studied earlier. Future studies using chimatic audio tones to reshape ice crystals remain as possible methods to use audiology in the healing of tissue inflammations. Although Cladney classified the 64 typical tones at which regular patterns appear, the study of chimatics as the effect of regular harmonies on matter is only beginning. Segment 3 Crop Circles Once upon a time, as far back as 1647 at least, the phenomenon we now call crop circles first began to appear in farmers' fields across northern Europe. By the turn of the second aeon, this phenomenon began to be recorded in nations all across the world. Now, it should be noted, it is no mystery how crop circles can be made today using such tools as the stalk stomper, wooden plank threaded on both ends to a string. The mystery that persists in the minds of all who make and study these phenomenal works of land art is what do they mean. Those who make them, though rarely on camera, claim it to be art for art's sake. Those who study them believe there is something more. Because there are so many crop circles that occur, are found and recorded each year, even since only the mid-70s, the use of aerial photography has made possible such a surplus of color stills of them that they cannot even all be counted, let alone be properly categorized. However, there are many people around who are devoted to the study of these creations and continue to seek for a hidden layer of meaning implied behind the maker's motives that may be sneaking into their artworks from a more heightened sense of awareness. Since all land art, like all geoglyphs and megaliths, is best visible only from in the skies above, the mystery remains about this folk craft, how it could have originated in the mid-17th century A.D., two centuries before the first airplane, in an era presumably before even the first hot air balloon. It is this mystery that drives many to delve into the deepest aspects of interpretation of this phenomenon, and to draw forth rich results from whence none might otherwise to the untrained eye have been found. These modern alchemists have forged forth a syllabary of the most common patterns expressed in crop circles. This syllabary of a new or even subliminally alien alphabet comprises a Homeric epic in a language of geometric shapes, patterns, and forms. Many who study crop circles have found a rich landscape replete with various terrains in the plain meaning of these amazing forms of expression. However, whether these speculations on the meanings of crop circles is valid or not remains one of the great modern mysteries of our age.